Hello and welcome to another episode of Planet Strand. So, guest today, well I don't need to describe him as the pride of Donegal. Now, not Daniel O'Donnell, but he is the Strand TV personality of the week. You may recognise him on the weekly roundup. It is Owen Boyce. Hello Owen, how are you? Hi guys, how are we? <laughs> so Owen, for the people who don't um, know, you maybe not watch weekly roundup. Um, who exactly are you and what exactly do you do with Instagram with us? Uh, well, my name's Owen. I'm from Donegal, as you said. I am from Friday Donegal. Um, I'm in my second year of Strand Mullis, and I'm doing both primary business and enterprise along with PE. Oh, well. Um, are you enjoying it then, yeah? Yeah, I love it. Brilliant. Great course. Best course about. <laughs> so, Owen, um, now, there is one particular hobby that people may have spotted in the background when you do your weekly roundups. Uh, and they might have got a bit intrigued, and I thought I might as well actually, um, when thinking about guests, but well, that's one person that could possibly talk about it. Owen, what is this hobby that you're surprisingly very good at? Uh, yeah, so I don't know people, if you're watching the weekly roundup, you might see a couple of way awards behind me here all around the room, but um, I'm a champion Irish dancer and have been since I was nine years of age, so I have. No, yeah. <laughs> For um, Northern, uh, for Irish dancing, a lot of people uh, would see it as river dance, which I have to point out. In all fairness, when it comes to st- sterilizing them, like putting it the narrow, now like a narrow point of view. When it comes to river dance, um, I know from a music point of view, it's fantastic. From a dancing point of view, it's fantastic. And if you're just sitting in the audience watching, you think, yeah, you, you know what? These people have a bit of skill um a bit of talent so <laughs> how, how do you feel when people say i dance in orchestra not just river dance um you know I, I get their point like a lot of people what they a lot of people like what they when they see irish dance and all they think about is oh sure that is that is river dance like a lot of people i think before i started doing it i sort of seen it as that too like it was always in my family but i never really seen it as anything but it's it's not river dance like what you see if you go and see river dance that is not what Irish dancing is. Like Irish dancing is so much more. Um, when you go to Riverdance, they are the professionals. Those are the people that have been doing it for like 10, 15 years. They have trained day in, day out since no age, like since such a young age to be there that day. Um, when like a big difference, like when you look at Riverdance and like what I do is I'm still a comp- competitor. When you look at competitive Irish dance um, from like our hips up, we don't move, like we do not move our upper body. It's one of our things, like our core has to be super tight. Um, we have to keep like a control of our shoulders. They're not allowed to move. Our arms have to be straight down by our sides. When sometimes when people think of Irish dancing, maybe in the older generation, that's what they think of as well. Um, but then when you go to river dance, it's a show. Like that is, that's their, their performing for you. Like obviously when we go on stage as a competitor, we're performing as well, but we're performing for judges mainly, for adjudicators, that's what we do. When you go to like river dance, or any show, it's a performance. Like they go out there to plumaz everybody, and it's it is like I have to say, Riverdance has done so much for Irish dancing. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, when you look at like like boys, even in Irish dancing, like back before Riverdance, there wasn't that many boys doing it at all. It wasn't seen as a manly thing to do. Whereas now, like there's still less boys in it than girls, but like there's way more than there would have been. Like and that is that is thanks to Riverdance. Like, yeah. Um... You mentioned about like obviously keeping your arms thing. Like I do, no, I have. I won't lie. I'm actually taking a lesson in Irish dancing just for the crack. Brilliant. And um, one thing I always remember was the first thing they taught us was it's all about posture. I remember they kind of mm-hmm. put us against the wall and like right shoulders back and you had to put your shoulders back and you had to nice straight back. So I do remember that. Now, for the people who haven't had. The honour of trying river dance, uh, not river dance. Speaking <laughs> of looking at me, uh, I haven't tried the honour of doing high dancing. It is difficult to keep. And honestly, it does really realise how about a bad posture you really have. I'm just being a bit annoyed. Um, but it is really difficult to kind of keep the tight posture and keep the whole body still, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Like I know, I know myself. It's one of the things like in my dancing career that I struggled with the most was like the posture part. Like I could do. Like, my legs was sort of, ah, yeah, we could figure that part out. That you, they can teach you that part, like, but something they can't teach you is your posture. Like, you have to, you just have to be able to do it. Like, it's, like, keeping your shoulders back whilst your legs fly about underneath you and fly about in the air. 
um, keeping your arms around by your side. Like it's just, it is, it's one of the hardest parts of it. It's nearly one thing that when you go to a show, like when you like turn professional and go into a show, it nearly makes it easier because oh, I can actually do a lot more now because I'm allowed to move my arms and I'm allowed to like jiggle my shoulders about like, but it is, it's like, I do, I do understand it though because it makes it look like such more of a professional dance. Like when your top half is like completely still. So it's like, it's a lot of like core engagement and core interaction. Um, but no, it is, it is, it's definitely, definitely super difficult. Like you mentioned like the, yeah, you mentioned the core that, um, is there any like exercises or diets like outside, like obviously during the year, obviously you have to practice, um, I stand to, but is there any diets or exercise you have to follow, um, the kind of the play, is there like a diet or actually to actually play a role in your preparation and obviously keeping up to standard? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, the way the Irish dancing season works is like, um, we have, it mainly goes from about September to November time. And then over Christmas, we take a, we take a break. Um, it's not really a break. You're still training. It's like, it's sort of like an off season, but then you start again. The season really and truly starts again in January. And that's it again till July. August is like a time where we really we wouldn't have many competitions, but it's like Christmas time. It's still like you're still training. Um, in terms of diet, you have to like it's you do have to follow a strict diet. Like you have to you have to limit yourself. Like you have to be able to be like right, okay, I know I know what I want. I ha- I know what I need to do in order in order to get what I want. Like if you want to succeed in dancing, you've got to be so strict about your diet. Um, like in exercises as well, it's not just getting up and oh, I'll go practice now for an hour. Practice is a massive part of it. But like going to the gym core exercises like actually like just like normal workouts like for the entire body is amazing like we have to do so much of it and it's something like when I was younger I never really done it I never really did it and I was like I, I don't really know why all these older dancers that are older like why are why are they going to the gym like can they not just go and practice for an hour instead and now that I am older like and I've noticed it in the last couple of years I'm like okay like you actually have to do so much more than just dance like when you're younger, you just you do just dance is what they all do. Um, but now, like everyone just they, you have to do so much more. Um, it's it's difficult and it takes up a lot of time. But when you stand on that top box, it is so worth it. Like so, it is. makes every single day worth it. Is there any foods that are do's and don'ts or? Um, you know what? It's like anything. It's like when you're just trying to eat healthy, and as we say, like everything's healthy in moderation. Like obviously, if you sit down. I have a full ten of quality streets. Clearly, that is not going to work. Like you know, um, oh, but we the tell people, there now. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, but but as we tell people, like, and some people do find it really struggle to struggle to believe it. If you look at an Olympic athlete, like obviously, like they still eat junk food, but they eat it in moderation. They don't sit down and have a full ten of quality street. They might have one more thing a day. Like that's but that's what you have to do. You have to be so careful. Um, but like you just. You just you do you do you follow your diet like you can have you can have your odd takeaway like but as long as you're not having it seven nights a week it's just like it's like everything. The thing is we we burn it off like we do train so much that we have to we have to put fuel into our body as well so we do have to eat a lot. Sometimes you're saying as you're like oh, moving to I'm definitely eating too much here, but you train that hard you have to put the calories in to get the calories out again like it is it's one of those things. Yeah, you mentioned obviously training hard and I say you do say in moderation and obviously I'm sure you have to make some sacrifices when people say, oh, do you want seconds and you're starting to like, I really want more seconds, but I can't. Um, all these sacrifices, um, I've seen by the backboard, you have been quite successful. All these um, sacrifices have really come around for you. Um, do you mind it's, um, explaining a few of those achievements and how that makes you feel? Uh, yeah, um, so like I never, I always sort of done well. My whole career was sort of like there. Um, but in 2019, definitely was one of my peaks. Um, I done, I was doing my leaving cert, which is the same as A-levels. Um, I done them in June. And then three days later, I went to Dublin for the Irish National Championships. Uh, the year before, in 2018, I came second. And I was like, right. And I was going, I was going to this year, or in 2019, I was like, right. Like, I, I know what I need to do. Like, I, I'm going here and I know what I need to do to win. And, like, the way it works is we do three rounds. Um, so, and it's judged by three different adjudicators each round. So we have nine altogether. Um, 
So then my first round, yeah, all went well. Second round went well. Third round went well. But then you wait for maybe four hours and you're there and you have done everything you possibly can and like you're just waiting and you know that someone knows the result someone there knows the result so then um what they did that day was they brought us all on stage and they done it in reverse order and that day i got this boy i was irish national champion for the first time um it was amazing like the feeling i got was it was unbelievable um I just broke into tears, like I genuinely did. Like it was three days after I'd finished my leaving sort exams and they got me into Strammels. So like I'd done pretty well. Three days later on the Irish National Championships, I was like, what is going on? Like I can't actually believe that I did this. Like it's, it was just, it was one of those moments that I'll take with me to my grave. Like I will have it forever. Like it was just so amazing. Um, that, was, that was the start of a great summer. Um, that, so that was on the Sunday, on the Wednesday. I went to Canada, to Vancouver, um, went to the North American Championships. Um, I got fourth of them. I had, it was uh, equal to my personal best. Um, and like considering that it was still just over a week since I finished my exams, I was like, this is absolutely surreal. Like what is actually happening? Like I was literally in Vancouver and I was like, this time last week, I was sitting doing my music exam. Like what, what is going on? Like who, who what is this word? Um, so I got fourth over there. I was absolutely ecstatic. Came home had three more weeks of intensive training um, and then we went to England and we had the British Nationals and in 2018 I was second at them as well so I knew coming into 2019 I was like right I know again what I need to do and that's when I was crowned British National Champion as well so within within a month I was Irish and British National Champion so quite amazing it's um the, the feeling it it doesn't get any better than that. Like it, like there's so much more out there. Like there's Warriors, there's All Ireland, there's so much more. But to me, I was like, that has that has made it. Like I, I felt all oh, the feel. I couldn't describe it. Like it just it was amazing. That's fantastic. Um, so, how would you? And obviously, um, people are watching this and I think, oh, you know what? Um, oh, I wouldn't mind giving it a go. And like obviously, I have to um, admit, like. I think I, when I did give it a go, it was just playing out of the fun of it, and I have to be really on it. I thought it was, it was, it was tough, but it was so fun just for the sake of doing it. How, um, um, in your point of view, how would people get involved and like try it out if they wanted to, to intrigued about it? Oh, definitely. I would advise anyone to do it, like no matter what age you are. Um, if you're young, if you're old, like if you're six, if you're in your thirties, if you're in your thirties or forties and you have a child, you want to get involved in it definitely would just go on facebook go on the internet look up dancing skills in your local area there is so many dancing skills about and there's so many fantastic ones about um everywhere in ireland and indeed across the world like they're absolutely amazing i would highly highly recommend it um even if you don't want to do it competitively like i have so many friends that don't do it competitive competitively anymore they just do it for fitness but just go online have a look see what dancing skills are in your area and go and find out like it's it's a great workout it is like it's everyone says if you want to do a real cardio workout go and watch a dancer practice because that is that is intense like but it's it's amazing i would definitely definitely recommend everyone like give it a go don't knock it till you try it like it's what we always say like uh, you mentioned that uh, um not don't knock it till you try it. is there any uh, obviously if anyone watching um been watching the planet strands videos or any plans for that or plan strand plus might as well get the marketing in there. Um, <laughs> um, is there any other inspirational quotes that you live by or would go by just to help you, inspire you, and keep you going forward, whether or not be um, in Stram Mellis or in life in general? Um, definitely. Like I always, I always knew. Like we were when I was twelve, I went to my first World Championships out in Boston. And um, I actually got 11, so I was pretty, pretty, pretty amazed at that. Like, um, but I was out there, and it was like we were going, and my teacher turned to me, and uh, she was like, "Right," she was like, "Like a 12 year old me, so innocent, going, going across the Atlantic was like, oh my days, this is amazing." I was amazed to even be getting on a plane to go over over the Atlantic. Like, I was like, "This is class," and she turned to me, and she just went, "You've worked hard, now follow your dream." And I was like, "Okay, that is that's an absolutely epic one." I was like. It really, really is. And um, that was that was one of my main ones throughout the years. I was like, yeah. Um, once I got to like like junior cert, which is GCSEs, like once I got to that, it was like, 
it was really it started to get really difficult in dancing um like we were in, like training intensely and i was like this this is really really difficult like it's it's so hard to figure out like exams and dancing and exams and dancing and i found the same when i was doing my leaving cert like it was it was really really difficult like the easter before um i done my leaving cert i went to greensboro for the world championships and i was like this is this is madness like i, I don't know what am i doing like where do i go and um one I got, one I heard that year was sweat plus sacrifice equals success. And I was like, yeah, like you go in and we work out for seven days a week, two hours every day, three hours every day, like four hours every day coming up to competitions. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is the sweat part, like the sacrifice. You sacrifice so much. Like you, I would go to school, like I would wake up at seven o'clock. I would train until maybe eight. I would shower, get ready, go to school until four o'clock and get in the car, drive an hour to class. Um, class for two and a half three hours come home might not be home till eight o'clock and i would start school work and i was like like i might like it was it was tough and like my time management was and like it was unreal like i just had to know exactly what i was doing all, all the time like i had no release valve like really and truly for a couple of weeks and it was like this it was super intense but i was like the sacrifice that i'm making is going to be so worth it and like i knew days after my leaving cert that it was so worth it like I wouldn't have changed the thing not one part of it like oh, the, all these skills and qualities you are be able to bring these across into the classroom won't you oh definitely like I know going in I'm like like if I know myself like if you look at a teacher like I would love for, like for the students if they look at a teacher and it's like oh my goodness he's actually achieved something so major in life like if I can go in and be like listen I, like I know the sacrifice it takes like I will know when teaching like school is not the be all and end all of everything like there is you need to have your extracurriculars like you need to have them things and like dancing was my release valve nearly and like but i just would do everything at it so i'm like i will take these in and i will like be like listen i know it's school you, but you have to clear your head as well like you have to go and do your sports like i know and like everything is just i will definitely take it in because i just think it's it's amazing like absolutely well, thank you very much, John. I really enjoyed our wee chat and it was fantastic um, to get talking to you. Um, hopefully, we'll soon see the return of the weekly roundup. Um, <laughs> hopefully, 2021, 2021. Exactly. Hopefully, it'll be a bit more interesting and hopefully, obviously, things will get better after all this COVID. And thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And hopefully, stay Lovely, soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.